Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about batteries, 12 volt batteries, and how they can be used in your station. Now, the specific question comes to us from John, NQ6Q, in Lincoln, California. And he has a setup where he has a 12 volt. Uh, AC uh, based power supply, 12 volt DC coming uh, that he plugs into the wall. And then he has, if that power drops out, it drops a relay out and the 12 volts from the battery comes in. And then there's the matter of charging the battery and so on. And so he asks me quite simply, can't I just leave the battery on the charger and um, use that directly to uh, serve the radio? The answer is yes, but like so many things that we would try to do. Now, in my station, I've got the reference station set up here. If you go to dcastler.com slash reference, let me write that down for you. dcastler.com slash reference Okay, slash reference. Shows you the reference station uh, for HF. Now, I've got that set up here. But with by unplugging and plugging a couple cables, I can attach my radio to my solar system. The solar system is a 250 volt panel out in the backyard and I've got four very large storage batteries over here. And then what I call a relay battery that's under here. These storage batteries are over 15 years old and they are fit for purpose. They were designed specifically for this application and they work fine, knock on wood. And so now the repeater battery under here is just a little battery from Walmart, a uh, marine 12 volt battery. It's really halfway between an auto battery and a deep cycle battery and they only last about three years and then have to be replaced. Fortunately, they're only about 70 or 80 dollars, although everything's going up in price these days. So let's look at what's going on. He has a 12 volt AC, 12 volt, and it's an AC input, 120 volt, 240 volts if you're broad or 220 depending on how your system is wired. Out comes 12 volt DC, which is actually 13.8 volts DC. The 12 volt, the 12 number here is a generic title for voltages in this range. Generic title. They do not actually put out 12 volts. And if you look at your uh, instruction book, um, my little ICOM 7300, which is part of the um, reference station, will take 13.8 volt plus or minus 15%, which will get it down slightly below 12 volts. But up over there in the corner, you see uh, Yesu FTDX 3000, which takes 12 volts plus or minus 10%. So that actually excludes 12 volts, and I've tried running it on the solar system, and every often it, uh, oh, what do they call it, unpredictable results, uh, because of voltage is too low, so I had to get a voltage booster in order to make it work. Now with this I don't, and I usually run this off the little 12 volt power supply that is part of the uh, reference station. Now what he wants to do is he has this coming into a switch um, to go to his rig and that's fine. And he has a dropout position over here if the AC drops out uh, that uh, he uses his battery which is a 12 volt. Again, generic title this battery ranges um, when it's under charge. If this is, we'll go with uh, sealed lead acid batteries because those are the common ones. 
14.1 volts is the maximum uh, voltage that you want to see that at. 13.3 is float voltage. And um, it will run if you start running it down to about 12.7. Now let's look at no charge. This is a rested battery, meaning it's been sitting for a few hours or more. The top voltage is 12.7, which indicates full charge. Okay, down to 12 volts, which indicates half charge. But you do not want to take a lead acid battery down below half charge. Now, why don't we just use lithium ion phosphate batteries? Good question. They have a different kind of charger. Uh, they have a battery management system built in, and they're about a volt higher than the so-called 12-volt batteries. Even though they say 12-volt on the side, they're really 13 plus. Okay, and they're a direct drop-in except for the charger. Some chargers will do both, and you have to tell it whether it is uh, doing a lead acid, that's sulfuric acid, by the way. You don't want to get that stuff on you. I mean, you can wash it off your skin, but if it even touches your clothing, it doesn't matter how quickly you rinse them, it will rot it right through. Ask me how I know. I used to work in a motorcycle shop when I was a teenager. And it ruined many Levi's that way. Okay, charger lead acid or L I F E P O four. Okay, um, you have to tell it which you're going to do. So he's got this running over here to that. Now what he wants to do is to leave the thing in uh, the cycling on the battery charger. A lot of hams do this. And it's not a good idea. Let me show you why. Okay, this will bring it in here. Now, I know like my RV comes in at 13.6 volts. The charger, you need to get a three-stage charger, and those are a little more expensive. Um, you can come into here, you know, and then go out to your radio. Now, of course, the radio might pick up on the noise inside the charger. These are usually switching power supplies and not designed for radio work, but this thing acts as though it's a big giant capacitor. Now, the problem is if this is off and you're right on here, it can go as low as 12 volts, which may be too low for your radio. You've got to check it out. And you don't want to go below 12 because you actually start to do damage to the battery when you go below 50% charge. That is not true of lithium ion. You can take lithium ion down to about 90% discharge and they're still fine. Don't, and the battery management system will disconnect the battery if you go past that. Okay, and the way you reset the battery management system is to recharge it in theory, if the battery management system responds properly. Okay, now if you do this charger, what will happen is it will keep this battery fully charged and it will keep it on a float of 13.3 uh, to 13.5 volts, which actually is just a little bit low for the radio, but it will still work. My concern is that the charger needs to occasionally bring the battery up to 14.1 volts for what's called bulk charge, not bulk, um, absorption charge. And oddly enough, spelled with a P, I know it's the root word is absorb, but it's absorption. Um, the absorption charge, which gets the last... Uh, 15 to 10 percent of the battery charge, which you will never get. Now, if you put your 13.8 supply here, 
and have it charge the battery, you'll note that that 13.8 volts is higher than the float voltage. So you're continuing to charge the battery past float. And so over time, this can be, oh, and here's a marvelous word, I love this word, deleterious to the battery. Not good for the battery, okay. So that's why we don't normally do this. Plus the battery never gets charged above 13.8 volts, so it never gets fully charged. So um, now, there are companies like Red Mountain Radio, uh, and I think MFJ has one, but Red Mountain Radio has one, where you can connect a battery, a regular power supply, a solar panel, and your radio to it. And it will manage all these charge things that have to happen here. And you have, in essence, an uninterruptible power supply because you've got the solar if you need it in the event of an extended outage, and you've got your normal AC and so on. And if you don't have a solar panel, you can just leave that out and put the other stuff in there. So take a look at those from West Mountain Radio. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, power gate. It's called a power gate. There's a super power gate. Okay, uh, here's the super booster that I used before. Okay, the Epic Power Gate is 12 volt uninterruptible power system that can supply up to 40 amps continuously from either a power supply or a lead acid or lithium battery with almost no voltage loss and also charges the battery with its high performance charger. A separate solar panel input can be used to charge the battery directly from a solar panel that has an output of less than 30 volts, which rules out 24 volt panels, by the way. Um, so there are different things that you can do here. Uh, the Epic Power Gate is $189.95. Now I've heard about these, I don't have one, uh, but you can look it up. So Paul, John, get it right. So John, I guess in summary, what I'd like to say is you're almost there. Uh, you've got the right idea, but to properly use it, you'd, it would be good to get one more piece of equipment in there that could act as your power center with all these supplies coming in so that you have an uninterruptible supply to your HF radio. And the fact that it'll go up to 40 amps, you can throw in your VHF radio there on that same power supply. And the two will, uh, you can use... You know, if you have two operators, one can be on UHF, VHF, and the other can be on uh, HF at full power. So, there you have it. Now, I would like to um, say a special thank you to Robert J. Sarvis. Robert J. Sarvis is my most recent patron. And, Robert, I want to say thank you for supporting this channel. Your uh, support of patron... Being a patron of my channel allows this channel to continue producing videos, and I appreciate what you're doing very much. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, go to patreon.com, it's on the screen, patreon.com slash ke0og, and pick away there that works for you. Thank you to all my patrons. It makes this channel possible. Also, those who are contributing through PayPal or just simply putting tips in there. By the way, i got to be careful with the word contributing. I'm not a charity. I pay taxes on all of this. So, until we next meet, 73.